Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hope everybody is doing absolutely fantastic on this morning. It is a gracious morning that we have not seen, but we have had the opportunity to come together and we are excited to be able to be here on this morning. Many of you are jumping on and we are elated that you have jumped on this morning and have joined us from a variety of different platforms. For those who do not know who I am, my name is Dr. Lakita Long. I'm a marketplace evangelist called to be able to powerfully inspire, to motivate, train, teach, and transfer information to people so they can be able to live their best life. And I get the opportunity to do that by using biblical principles and psychological concepts in order to help people form a way of living. So glad that I've been able to do that. And I'm obsessed. I'm over the top obsessed about information surrounding personal development and spiritual growth and enhancement. And I say that as in a real, real way, because many people, even the scripture tells us that without a vision, the people will perish. And many, many people are perishing uh, because there is no vision. And vision just gives us opportunity to be able to see. I actually woke up early this morning, as I do every morning, but this morning I woke up a lot more earlier than normal. And um, in the earliness of waking up this morning, I had been asking God about the energy that he put in me that was to produce what he had called me to be. I have been fascinated by looking at Queen Elizabeth II, her life, 70 years of reigning in one position, one space, one place, the things that she has amassed. And of course, with anyone living to be 96 years of age uh, and 70 years in power, uh, there will be a lot of different controversy, contradictory, and uh, lots of things that is going to be said about you. Done a little bit of research on her for years, actually, and then they had a wonderful series on uh, Netflix. If you've not seen it, it was a number one series called Crowned, and it was phenomenal. It gave you the insight uh, story, the truth story behind the scenes of the crown, uh, including her going into her reign and what that looked like, what that felt like, um, it matched actual true life stories and things of that nature. So I'm sharing with us, uh, cause I was sharing about how I woke up this morning and asking God to bring me back that, that energy. You remember the time in your life where, um, you just were unstoppable. Anything that came your way, you overcame it. Anything that happened to you, you understood it. Um, you were not easily persuaded by things that took place in your life. And this is what the Revive the Mind is all about, is to literally get to the root cause of what's got you handheld and handicapped, the way you're not being your best self. And today, uh, the Lord put in my spirit, for us to focus on something I've spoken about many times and have a particular theme or thought around this area. Um, but I'm gonna go a little bit deeper uh, so that we can have a different level of experience. So if you're joining us for the first time during our Revive the Mind, I Speak Live 30 day campaign, listen, you are in for a treat and not because I'm speaking, but because I am a profound believer that whatever you receive and then you do, you will have the results of what it is. Whatever you receive and then you do it, you will have the results. Many people are stuck with 80 pounds on their body because they receive information about what they can do, but they never do it. Therefore, they become hearers only and not doers. And the Bible tells us what happens with individuals who become hearers only and not doers. And I'm telling you today, you can't afford to just be deceiving yourself. And that is what we do in all aspects of our life when we're hearing something and not doing. Therefore, the only person to blame when things are not going the way that we desire has nothing to do with Satan, has nothing to do with um, demonic influences or people liking you or not liking you or whatever. It has all to do with the lack of action that you and I are taking. And when we take no action, we have no results. Let's say it again. When I take no action, I will have no results. Let's say one more time for the people in the back. When I take, you take, we take no action, there will be no results. And I take personal development. I take spiritual development very, very serious. I take mental health very, very serious and have for more than 32 years 
particularly because we ignore the very essence and the very areas in our lives that actually create the fulfillment of purpose, plan, and destiny. Does that make sense? So my job, my push, the anointing on my life is called to cause you to dismantle the negative energy and the negative narrative that you've lived in, embraced, and even have loved on for too long. So today we're going to be talking about the pain of loss. We're going to talk about the pain of loss. We will deal a little bit about grief, but I want you to focus in on the loss because the loss can be not just about a person that you lose. It could be a thing that you've lost and, and it could also be your own self that you've lost. So we're going to talk about the pain of loss. I want to start us off with a quote. What distinguishes you from others is not what you say, but is what you give. I'm going to say it again. What distinguishes you from others is not what you say, but what you give. The scripture says, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. Swift to hear, slow to speak. And I don't know why. Oh, there it is. Okay, thank you so much. Wherefore, my beloved brother, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. James 1 and 19. There are many, many things that people are saying, and I want you to hear this, but there are many, many things that they are not doing. We, us, together, what are we saying? What are we doing? And is what we're saying contradictory to our doing? Do we create an atmosphere of loss and disappointment because we fill our mouths up with unbridled words and an untamed mind? The answer for many is yes. We are constantly moving in the spirit of creating loss and disappointment by the words that we say. We teach on love and yet we operate in partiality and the lack of love shows up when we want to control a person, a thing, or a situation and cannot. At times, we all have limited ability to handle things in our life. And this limitation will create unnecessary responses and will make what you and I say non-valid. The deliberate way of being is to be able to elevate our conscious mind to a better state of being. Today, though, we're going to discuss and provide you with specific information around the pain of loss. The pain of loss is the emotional feelings you and I have when someone or something you love, I love, we love has been taken away but it's not the only definition of the pain of loss. The pain of loss is also when you are overwhelmed because of something you no longer have access to. And I say the latter definition because I want you to fixate your heart, not merely on who you've lost, but that you've lost yourself. Most people's acting out in attention-seeking behavior is due to the fact that they have lost themselves, unable to speak clearly about their own desires. They lack the ability to put in place healthy boundaries. They do not have a sense of motivation and momentum on their own. They have to always be coerced by a mission or a vision. And usually that's indicative of the fact that you have lost yourself. And when was the last time that you have grieved about losing yourself? Most times when you have depression, it is an arbitration to the fact that you have lost yourself. When we move into obesity and we lack the respect to our bodies and neglect it, we have lost ourselves. When we cause ourselves to get too low in petty conversations that render nothing except for the miserableness of those who started it, we have lost 
ourselves. So today, I want us to take a look at the pain of loss, the ones that we lose, that we love. But I want you to focus in on the fact that you might have lost yourself. You've lost your dignity, class, and your worth of being able to fulfill what God has called you to do. Anytime you and I are distracted from the ability to go full throttle because of fear, rejection, something else, then we have lost the capacity to believe in ourselves. And when a man or a woman is no longer able to believe in themselves, the Bible gives us great records and tells us that like that man's whole house is exposed. That man's whole house, it's like a man that has a house with no walls. Anybody can come in and destroy it. And so what we want to talk about is the pain of loss, but I want to make sure you understand the context of what's been lost, not just the loved one that you lost through death, but I'm also talking about the loss of yourself that you lost through assassination of your character or just the overwhelming procrastinating spirit that has robbed productivity, energy, and effort. And so we're going to be direct today. We're going to make sure that you are not playing any games with your life, but you are experiencing true understanding about loss. Watch this. Loss feels overwhelming. Say it. I know loss is overwhelming and it brings shock. It brings numbness. It brings immense sadness. Loss brings about denial. You will move in denial and you will deny others. Mm. Loss brings about despair and it will cause you to operate in desperation, making irregular decisions, causing your life to move in havoc rather than in a planned way of progression. Loss brings anger and anger unbridled will always bring the fool out in you and people will not see the wisdom. I just saw a quote and it was so powerful. I was actually on a, uh, I'm a part of several behavioral uh, groups on a clubhouse and the man had said, information overload but starving in wisdom. Most people have information overload, starving in wisdom and pain of loss brings about a starving in wisdom because of the anger that clouds your ability for clarity. The pain of loss is also intersected with people and things, but definitely don't you dare forget that loss also includes you. What type of loss do you feel when you've been taken away? You've been taken away. The very essence of your personality. Can I imagine that if people brought me into a room but told me I could not use my gift of discernment or my gift of word of knowledge or my excitability about life or my excitability about change and seeing people empowered? Do you understand what would happen if people said, all I want you to do is speak on this, but don't bring any references from five to 10 different places that will actually open up people's mind. Do you know what kind of loss that would be for me? And not to not to say the loss it would be to them that are listening, because without me being fully who God has called me to be, revived in my mind, situated in my thinking, I'm nothing and you can't be all that God's called you to be. Therefore, it is imperative that the pain of loss is looked at across the spectrums. It cannot just be that I'm lost because of the grief of someone going through and things of that nature. As a matter of fact, I want us to be clear between grief and loss. Grief is how a person responds to loss. Grief is how a person responds to loss. After someone dies, you may feel sadness, anger, emptiness, confusion, and many other things. Grief is a process. Loss is a state or feeling of the grief. Grief is a process. Loss is the state or the feeling of that grief. Grief is your emotional response, as we stated before, to the experience of loss. But mourning is the process of adjusting to life after a loss. You mourn because you're now trying to adjust to the loss. So right now in the UK, in, in Britain, uh, and, and they are right now mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth II. 
and they are adjusting to the life at the loss. That's why she's lying in state until Monday. And they're doing this whole ritualistic thing to give people time to adjust their lives after she's no longer here with us. Mourning is influenced by your society, culture, and your religion. Bereavement, on the other hand, is the period of time. Bereavement always has to do with time. Somebody said bereavement has to do with time. Bereavement is the period of time when you experience the grief. The scripture actually gives us some references about how long should we grieve and mourn. And he told several of his men of God, listen, you go and you do whatever you need to do, Joshua, but you only got about 30, 40 days to be grieving over Moses. And then after those 30, 40 days, you're done. Do your bereavement, take your period of time and be, experience your grief and keep moving. Loss affects many things, therefore making your ability to cope sometimes even harder. If you're just joining us, we're talking about the pain of loss. Loss also does the following. Loss changes, somebody say, it changes my emotion. And I want, we're getting ready to go deep here because some of you have been in loss mode for decades. Mm, God, I felt that in my spirit. Some of you have been in loss mode for decades. Your emotions have been frayed and it has been dissected and on a dismantled place for so long that the loss feeling has become one of your regular emotions. But we're going to break that down today. Loss changes your emotions. And if not careful, you will start to experience anxiety or depression. Loss brings about feelings of guilt, relief, and it could also bring about helplessness. So loss does number one, changes your emotions. Number one, it changes your emotions. Number two, loss changes your thoughts. Loss changes your thoughts. Number three, loss brings about physical, it brings about physical sensations. Loss brings about physical sensations. Your chest or your throat starts to feel tight or heavy. You feel absolutely sick to your stomach. Loss number four, it changes your behaviors. You have difficulty in falling asleep or staying asleep. Your energy level is low. These are the behaviors that loss change. You experience changes in how you experience your faith and or your spirituality. Do you understand that? Grief and loss can make you question your beliefs in God and how you see the world. And many people, I think, who vacillate for what they believe concerning God and the Bible and this and the other, I believe they're in a state of some form of loss, unidentified, yet it is loss. When we experience loss, it happens in waves and cycles. I'm sorry, grief happens in waves and cycles, but loss can happen every single day. As long as we empower the feeling of the loss, it can happen every single day. This is very important. The pain of loss is the remuneration of what is no longer and the belief that this is what you were made of or should do. Let me say it again. The pain of loss is the remuneration or the constancy of saying or repeating a thing, rehearsing a thing of what is no longer. And it's the belief that that is what you have been made of or that's what you should be doing. That is the pain of loss. It's the constancy of the rehearsal. It's the constancy of the remembrance. Okay, both, both of my parents are deceased mom and dad. My father was killed in the drive-by shooting when he was 65. Devastation. Five days after I turned 16, the greatest time of my life. I was going to be the first 
person in my family to get a brand new car and just so many different things. And as a way to commemorate the death, I just opted. I told my mom, listen, we just opt not to do the loan for the car and just no, just go on with what the plans we need to do. The grief and the pain of that loss, I could not even fathom the loss at the time. Watch this. Therefore, I did not experience the grief truly until two years later when I was in college in my first year. And I was thinking about not when I didn't have monies to pay for something. And I was angry and upset that my father, who would just make it happen if he had to get a loan because he was in the Navy for 34 years, if he had to get a loan from the credit union, I watched him, I would go with him. He would just get the loan and do different things or whatnot but he was gone. So the pain of the loss tracked me down two years later, my first year in college and I had all this stuff on my desk in my room. And I was just so angry, right? And I just cleared the desk with my hand and screamed at the top of my lungs. So the pain of loss will also cause a delayed reaction to the grief, all right? So how do we adjust? How do we adjust back to a better place? Number one, you must accept that the loss happened. The loss of someone or the loss of yourself. I want you to take inventory right now. Right now, you know you ain't your best. You, you and I cannot be our best when we're 85, 90 pounds overweight, when we are not clear, we're always tired, overly fatigued, this, that, and the other, taking eight, 10, 12, 14 pills. And by no means am I denigrating what you have to do to survive. I'm just saying, how in the world did we get there? Did we get to a place where we have to survive on stuff that's got all these different side effects or whatnot? What did we do? And what can we reverse so we're not in that same state? So number one, you accept that the loss happened. Acceptance is the greatest place for you to be able to be an introspective, forward-thinking person. Number two, if you want to adjust back to a healthy place, you must feel the pain and the grief. Quit trying to numb it. Utilize your time with God. Utilize the opportunities that God has given you to pray, to seek his face and being in his presence, but feel the pain or the grief. Your husband, your spouse, wife, whatever, cheated on you, infidelities, high, whatever the case may be, feel the pain and the grief of that loss of trust. And when we don't feel the pain, we have high anxieties, panic attacks, Come on here. Depression overwhelms us because we have a, remember we talked about this, we got a reality going on and then we got something else that's not true and we're not wanting to deal with the truth of a thing. And so we're trying to stuff what's not true and create a different reality. And that's when we start becoming unbalanced mentally. Deal with the pain. Number three, adjust to life and move on. We are thinking that things are just going to be what they're going to be. Listen, you get into a car accident, you have insurance, deal with it, thank God you didn't die, find out what's next, what's going to work for you, having it unfixed, having it fixed, fix it, move on, quit reaming, uh, 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 going over and over in your head that you had it. You create trauma pockets. You create trapped trauma every time. Oh, I remember when. And it's not of a testimony space. It's of a recollection space as if you owned the experience so to the point where now it has put you in like, I can only speak on it, but I can't testify about it. That's different. Testimony is I was in an accident that the Lord brought me out. The car was smashed and I got out of it. The other instance is when, oh my God, I can't believe I was having such a bad day. I was doing all of that. No, let's stick to the facts, adjust your life and move on. Number four, find new ways to coordinate how you want to live better. How are you going to live better? Let me tell you something that I've learned. And this is to me first. Nothing that I'm doing can really be about what anybody else has done or said, at the end of the day, it's all gonna come down to what I decided I was going to do and what I decided that I've done. Don't you ever forget that. You wanna be the best 
in something. And here's the sad part the Lord told me this morning. Many of you have stopped wanting to even be the best. I don't even know where that even came from. I'm just trying to make it. Well, you go ahead and you make it on over here. Because life's too short to just want to make it. He said we would. He said if we stay in him, he would keep us even to the ends of time. I will not forsake you. Nor will I allow your seed to beg for bread. He told us that. So why do I just want to make it? No, I want to be the best. When you hear mental health in the church, I want everybody sending me information because they know that's my thing and I'm good at it. And people's lives become refreshed and renewed because of the information that I'm able to share. I want to be the best in it. Absolutely. And I can only do it if I want it and find new ways to coordinate how I'm going to live my best life. In dealing with the loss, here's what you also must specifically deal with. And this is important as we get ready to come to a close. You must deal with disappointment. Disappointment is so damning because it lingers and it's got this false feeling of a bunch of other stuff. So disappointment shows up and it tries to make you feel like you're learning a lesson of something you have, have gone through but you don't realize it until it's too late. The disappointment has turned into a sadness and the sadness is turned into depression, turned inward. So disappointment is, can be a very visceral weapon if you don't handle the disappointment well. Feelings of loss, also you deal with feelings of insecurity. You will feel insecure about how you move. Number three, when you're dealing with loss, you also feel hostility, emotional hostility. Every time somebody says something, you biting back. You got something to say. You hostile. And really, it's probably because of that laden loss factor in your spirit that you've not even addressed. Some of you, when you got married, you lost yourself and they never found yourself. It is the truth. Anyhow, I don't care if you say the Lord called y'all to be married. We're putting the Lord on a whole lot of stuff. We are. But I would need for the person God called to show back up. The Bible says it like this in Matthew 5 and 4. Blessed are those who mourn, but they should be comforted. The Apostle Paul then further warned us in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. And he showed us a different way of how to deal with loss. And this is the English standard version of this scripture in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. But he said to me, my grace, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Loss inhibits your ability to plan. I want you to see that. If you're having a hard time to plan, there might be some loss there. Loss inhibits your ability to plan because it traps your emotions, your energy, and your efforts, and it causes you not to thrive nor be productive. Does you understand what I'm saying? And the pain of loss affects our focus. And when we are an unfocused people, to be honest, we are an untrustworthy people. I know that's harsh, but people who are not focused, they're not trustworthy to me. Let me tell you why we are not trustworthy. I put myself in there. Because we say a lot of things, but our focus is telling people what we're actually doing. And if the two are not aligned, then it tells people we're not in sync, which means we're not actually spending the time we need to be clear in our thinking. That's why reviving the mind is so important and speaking life. So you can look at what has the pain of loss done for you? Some of you have had the pain of loss from eons and eons of years ago, 20, 30, 40 years ago, and you still are operating under the guise of the pain of loss. And I'm here to tell you, you need to shift gears and become emotionally solvent. You gotta take the emotional debris out and look at what's been lost, family, loved ones, 
But don't you dare forget if you've lost yourself. It's the greatest, it's the greatest space of a silent cry that I hear in people's lives. They don't even know that they're crying because of the loss of self. They think they're crying because they're sad because of someone else. At the end of the day, when they really come to themselves, they will find out I am not who I need to be for me and for others. I pray that today on the Revive the Mind, I Speak Life 30-day campaign, that you will be blessed and that you will understand loss doesn't mean life is over. Loss does mean that life has just begun. Did you get that? Life, loss does not mean that life is over, but loss does mean that life has just begun. Don't you ever forget that? Whether it's a loved one that you've lost or you figured out today, God, I've lost myself. I'm way over the top moody. I'm, I way give people too much attitude. I'm no good for nothing in this moment because I'm inconsistent in my ability to be focused and committed. I know if that's you, repent before your God, repent to your own soul and then change midstream. All right, it's been my blessing. I pray that you have been blessed. Remember, get your shirt, get your I Speak Live shirt. It's absolutely imperative for Inspiring New Counseling Center so that we can be able to do more things for people around the globe. Buy your shirt. Our desire is to sell 25 shirts uh, a day. We need to sell 25 shirts a day and I have to keep pushing it. I don't care what, 25 shirts a day. I know we can do that every single day. Will help us to be able to do the things that we need to do concerning helping people to live their very best life. I love you guys so much. And remember the greatest person that I'm looking at is you and you are great to God. Love y'all and have a great rest of your day. God bless.